Book it, Dov Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, February the 21st, 2017. And right now, Russia is mourning the loss of one of its greatest ambassadors ever, the Russian ambassador to the United Nation, Vitaly Cherkin, who has passed away uh, yesterday, according to early reports right now out of New York City. It is uh, that he had a heart attack. That's what the police are saying. As of now, the according to what took place, he walked outside of the Russian embassy. As he was walking along, he fell suddenly ill and then was uh, rushed to the Presbyterian Hospital where he later died. There still is not any confirming report of the actual death that he had, uh, but clearly he has died and he has followed in a line of three other uh, foreign Russian diplomats that have died in the last three months. And this is one of the reasons why Israeli News Live, we are looking at this more from a suspicious point of view. We're going to kind of bring that out, why we feel that this may be a suspicious death. Uh, we do know that um, uh, Vitaly Cherkin was very, very outspoken. Uh, he was a very courageous Russian diplomat. Our condolences go to him, to his family, as well as to the Russian government, President Putin, uh, and the, the rest of his colleagues around the world. No doubt many of them, uh, as we have even been seeing, have said many nice things about uh, Vitaly Cherkin uh, because of his uh, courageous stance that he would take. I'd like to share with you, though, one of the more memorable moments here that happened uh, just last year in September, uh, September 17th, 2016, uh, at the United Nations when Vitaly Cherkin walked out, Samantha Powers coming in there being very brash and against Russia uh, for their stance inside of Syria. And I'd like for you to hear just for a moment what this man had to say there about Samantha Powers there. Watch this here. For my years in the United Nations, that is over 10 years, and in all my years in international life, I've never seen, which is over 40 years, I've never seen such an extraordinary display of uh, American heavy-handedness as uh, uh, we are witnessing today. As I was talking uh, in the Security Council, sharing our analysis and frustration of the situation of Syria, Ambassador Power chose to talk to you. The only thing her deputy had to say uh, in response to my comments was that the U.S. investigating, is investigating what has happened at Denisov. As Ambassador Power walked in, first thing she said, she was not interested in what I, what, what I have to say because what I was saying is a stunt. So it's, there is no point uh, in my listening to Ambassador Power. So I decided to leave the room, my delegation is there, and to share my reflections with you. Uh, in fact, uh, 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 this is a very serious concern that uh, we wanted and we did share today with the members of the Security Council. Let, let me just kind of share with you real quick what's going on here. By the way, the timing of, that this happened and Samantha Powers, the foreign ambassador for the United States under the Obama administration, the entire NATO group had really become under a panic because of the events that were uh, unfolding inside of Syria, something that never made mainstream media. We reported it here on Israeli News Live. And this is where Russia, using a cruise missile, had struck a secret underground base <clears throat> inside of Aleppo that actually killed uh, quite a few foreign intelligence officers. And the United States was in an uproar. Del El Zor, as he is speaking about on here inside of Syria, the U.S. Uh, and some of the NATO allies there had bombed, supposedly, according to the U.S. Uh, report on that, that it was by accident, had bombed the, the Syrian army that had killed uh, some 80-something people. It was like 60 uh, Syrian military were killed, but there were also about a dozen Russian special forces that were killed in that blast as well. Uh, the bombing that continued to went on for over an hour. Russia did retaliate, and when Russia retaliated, they, they struck a secret intel base bunker inside of uh, Aleppo there, which killed intelligence officers, and including Americans, Israelis, Saudis, Turks, uh, and, and Qatarian members. I forget exactly how many were in there. And this is why we saw such a major uproar from NATO suddenly over Russia's involvement inside Syria. And uh, so they were under a panic, things that were going on. Uh, we also know that as the year uh, began to wind down, we, we had a second incident 
wherein Russia and Syria had cornered American and British soldiers, as well as another spy ring of 14 um, uh, intel officers working inside of Aleppo there. And so this had become a big issue. So uh, truly, Vitaly Cherkin had become a major thorn in the side of the U.S. government uh, under the Obama administration. Uh, but again, as I stated, though, we've had not just one. I mean, if it was only Vitaly Cherkin, I would probably say, okay, you know, maybe he died of natural causes. But, you know, friends, it's, there's been so many things that have happened here in the last six months, but even in the last three months especially. We had also the downing of the uh, famed Red Army uh, choir that was on board uh, a Russian jet that took off. 92 people were killed. It wasn't just the choir that was on there. There were Russian colonels and generals on board going to Syria to inspect for chemical weapons use. There were specialists from Russia in Russian news that said that this plane was actually downed. Uh, the official report did come out later, said that it was a malfunction by the pilot, uh, but there were Russian specialists in other news in Russia that we brought out that did say that no, it was not. It was, they believed it was brought down by a, uh, a, a some type of electronic warfare that caused everything to stop working inside the plane. But nonetheless, Russia has never admitted to this. Uh, neither has, has that been denied other than to say that they believe that it was a malfunction by the pilot. Then we have, though, for example, we have right here the senior Russian diplomat found dead in Athens' apartment in Greece, and this was Andre Malanin. And Andre Malanin, he had had no, 54 years old, and then just suddenly dies. It is still, to this day, it is unknown how he actually died. What did he die from? No one knows. There's never been an official um, really report that states why he actually died. Now, this, was, uh, this happened uh, back on January the 9th, you know, only a, a little over a month ago. Uh, we also had the Russian ambassador to India, Alexander uh, Kadikin, that dies at 67. Now, of course, he's getting older, like, like that of, uh, uh, of Cherkin. Cherkin also being 65 uh, today, it would have been 65 had he lived to today. Uh, but uh, the Russian ambassador to India, he dies at 67 of a heart attack, but has no former history of heart trouble whatsoever. So another suspicious type of death. Of course, Andrei Karlov, everybody knows why he died. He was shot and murdered. Uh, he was killed by the assassin, who you see pictured also to the left of the screen there and behind there. So what's actually going on? You cannot help but wonder what is, is happening with, with all these uh, particular deaths here. Um, then, then we have, um, um, I'll go back to Melania Trump here in just a moment here, but then we have the CIA. This was something that I wanted to bring to your attention. Now, this was, this was disclosed in 1975, something that the CIA was using a dart gun that can cause a victim to have a heart attack that is untraceable. 1975, we are in 2017, nearly, what is that, 40, 40, uh, gosh, I don't know, 40-something years later, uh, we, we are far more advanced in technology, and if they had that then, what can they do now? Take a listen to this just briefly here on what this lady has to say um, here. As a poison that was undetectable, especially one that seemed to uh, mimic a heart attack that would kill someone, but it would it appear that they had a heart attack. I did find such a thing. Does this pistol uh, fire the dark? Yes, it does, Mr. Chairman, and a special one was developed which potentially would be able to uh, enter the target without perception. The, the poison was frozen into some sort of dart, and then it was shot at uh, very high speed into the person, so at, when it reached the person, it would melt inside them, and the only thing would be like one little tiny red dot on their body, which was hard to detect. There wouldn't be a needle left or anything like that in the person. But also the toxin itself would not appear in the autopsy? Yes, so that uh, there was no, no way of perceiving that the, uh, the target was in. So there you have it right there. And is it possible? Sure it is. There is also technology now that things of this nature can be even done by a cell phone. Uh, now, I, I don't have time to go into that on this particular broadcast, but again, uh, it just seems a bit suspicious to me. And I'm, maybe Russian officials will, will never come up and say this, but uh, 
I think that it should be looked into a lot further, and Russia should, because they have lost a lot of diplomats. In three months, four diplomats are dead. Four Russian diplomats all died in a space of three months here. That does seem a little bit unusual. We haven't seen that many American diplomats pass away in the last three months, uh, so it just doesn't seem normal. Something's going on, and no doubt this may be an elite war, an elite war that is going on, and different ones may be sending messages. Uh, kind of on a good note, I'd like to uh, end our broadcast here, something that uh, Democrats seem to hate, but I thought was an outstanding thing uh, that the First Lady Melania Trump did. Uh, just the other day when she was in South Florida, she opened it with the Lord's Prayer, the prayer that is believed, to, or at least from a biblical account, was taught by uh, Jesus Christ to teach his disciples when they asked him, how do we pray? He said, and he gave the Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven, as we know the prayer. And she gave this prayer uh, the other day in Florida, and it really sent out a storm uh, of leftists that hated the fact that she gave this prayer, saying that not everybody is a Christian. What difference does that make? Christian or not, what difference does it make? We have Arabs standing in America right now in total silent crowds as thousands listen on as they are crying out, Allah Akbar. Well, maybe not everybody in the crowd is Arab. Maybe not everybody is a Muslim. No, I shouldn't say Arab, but a Muslim or Islamic. <clears throat> so is that to say that it's wrong for the Islamist people to say Allah Akbar if that's what they believe? They have the freedom and a right to say what they believe. So why can't Melania Trump, who is a Christian, stand up and say the Lord's Prayer? I applaud her for doing so. And I applaud her for her courageous stand that she made. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.